Hey all my fellow and soon to be maniacs out there, this is your favorite web comic creator and animator. And for today's video, I will be taking you guys through my Blender slash Clip Studio workflow, how exactly I set up my web comics and the overall setup of my projects. So if you guys enjoy the content that I do and you would like to see more, I suggest you head on down to that like button as well as subscribe and ring that notification bell to be notified of anything else I do on this channel. If you want early access to my web comics as well as support me, I also have a Kofi, so check that out as well. So let's get right into this workflow and if you guys don't have clip studio you can actually just adjust this workflow to actually fit other various drawing uh, applications you use whether it's photoshop or creator but i would say the most efficient way to use this process is with clip studio and blender i have the ex version with all the different types of features and i think that will be more beneficial in terms of this workflow in terms of you using it for web comics and webtoons specifically because there is a whole bunch of features that you can use for comics alone there are templates that you can use and various other aspects that can be very time saving and make a lot of things more easier for you as well as make your workflow more efficient starting off with clip studio we have no file open just a nice empty clip studio with all the various things that i need and so we're gonna hit new year and i go to the top and as you can see i already have some sort of setup here in terms of how big i would like my page to be how much pages there will be and how i would like it divided so you can kind of mess around with these settings i'm not sure if this is actually in the pro version of clip studio but it definitely comes with the ex version of clip studio and you can see there's various different templates that you can use even for print a fanzine as well as other comic settings but i normally just go with webtoon because that's where i upload my comics and i like um, uploading it in the vertical scrolling format so i normally use the webtoon setting and you can call the file name whatever you want and then once that is done you just hit ok and it will create your scene for you and you can see with clip studios functionality it actually splits the pages up in how many sections you want and this actually adds more to the efficiencies of clip studio in terms of making web comics so once i set that up i'm gonna open one of the scenes i've already set up already for one of the next episodes of kill all the heroes shameless plug if you guys haven't read that comic i suggest you do there are links in the description down below and i clicked on one of the canvases for the file itself and as you can see i have my own little setup going on here because i like to name things keep things neat and tidy so that so i can actually reuse this template itself for other episodes coming up here you can see i have a nice little folder for sfx for special effects of course and i have a reference folder this is what this layer is on it's obviously where i do my thumbnailing and everything i write down all the wording because for those of you who don't know i don't script my work i just go straight into thumbnailing this is technically my script for the next episode and the important thing for this process is you don't want to go too much in detail here as you can see i just did a whole bunch of you know doodling or whatever like it's not really concise not very important what you do here because when we're gonna hop into blender you'll see why i say that and then i have my text layer this is where i put all my speech bubbles in so we have another file layer here which is uh, panels which is obviously the panels and how i actually set that up we have this panel frame tool and you can actually just lay it out like that and you can see it masks out everything outside of the panel and what i would do with this is the way things are laid here it actually helps um, with the, the reference over the panel but you can also drop your reference layer over here and then just turn down the white canvas so you can actually see through here and exactly what is going on that's just one of the ways i would do it um, usually i keep the reference over the panels because i normally do the speech bubbles in the reference layer whatever is more comfortable for you and whatever works for you so the overshot folder is basically for panels that kind of bleed into other panels or there's certain effects that happen that kind of you know shoot over the paneling and so to avoid the masking of the frames in terms of the paneling layer i normally use the overshot so i can actually just draw certain types of effects over the panels whatever they may be and that adds more to the stylistic aspect of the comic itself so this is the basic setup i also added a white layer and you'll see it's locked uh, this is actually just to not make the canvas as bright as white because I like having a nice gray canvas so I don't burn my eyes out if I'm working all through the night or you know staring at the screen for however long I'm staring at the screen so I always add a nice 
white layer just over the dark layer because if you guys don't know my canvas is usually uh blacked out and that's just stylistically how i do my comics you might do a white backdrop i don't know green blue it doesn't matter you know okay but now once that is set up i will head on to blender and if you guys don't have Blender, I suggest you get it. It's an awesome piece of software for 3D stuff as well as animation itself. Really good, very powerful. It's a quite a steep learning curve, but if you guys can get a hang of it or if you're already proficient in it, I suggest you actually use it for this workflow. Before I used to actually do my comics fully in Blender, and on a side note, before I actually used Blender entirely for my comic process, and I would actually just then bring it over to like Photoshop and do the final finishing touches there. So it was kind of like a 90% Blender workflow with a 10% Photoshop finish. And even before that, I used to use Photoshop solely, just Photoshop to do my comics. I've been experimenting with these two softwares quite a bit, and I found out that just using Clip Studio is much more efficient because Photoshop slows down the process quite a bit. It takes a while to open, it takes a while to close, as well as it crashes and there's various other problems that I have with Photoshop. And Clip Studio is much more lighter on the PC, it doesn't drag it down. And at the same time, I can actually have Blender and Clip Studio open at the same time. And this is why I really enjoy this workflow because the exchange between the softwares are almost seamless and they actually don't interrupt me. I get to keep that state of flow and keep moving and doing my work. Here in Blender, what I do is, and this is gonna be interesting, just notice the reference here because this is going to be a reference for setting up your scenes in the blender file so i'm gonna bring up one of the files i have already done just for the sake of saving time and you can see i have kind of uh, named my folders accordingly so that i know exactly where i can find these scenes for the different episodes the naming convention in the folders may not make sense because you'll see they just they're just named kind of randomly and they don't coordinate with the panels but you can coordinate with the panels if you would like i normally just name them whatever because uh it doesn't really matter i know which scenes go with which but if you want to coordinate those more i suggest you do so because it actually helps you in the long run of uh, i don't need to so that's why i don't do it so now you can see all the different types of elements i use within my background scenes as well as i use this time to put down the perspective in terms of the characters as well as the character position positioning in the scene with the setup itself as you can see this is a let's actually pop it in the render view so we can see the full extent of what the scene looks like so there we go you can see i actually have my and by the way i actually made these custom shaders myself for my backgrounds as i normally do these are just simple nodes that you can actually use within blender and they actually come with the program I'm going to pop up my shader nodes on the side so you can see actually the setup of what I've used here. And so let's go through the background first. Uh, you can see I actually have a light in the scene to light it up a bit and add some ambiance to the scene. I added a whole bunch of things over here. And actually if you look closer into the ground you can actually see some like... Um, you know variations in the ground uh kind of like a sketchy effect that's kind of what i wanted to do with the grounds because you know some artists that what they would do is sketch the ground for perspective so these lines kind of bend the perspective a bit and kind of and give you a more better idea of what the perspective is you know pretty simple setup if you go here you can actually look at the background it's just a bunch of cubes i didn't spend too much time on it and this is what i suggest you do if you were to do a background just don't over saturate it with various vertices and objects and stuff like that keep the scenes as simple as possible if you do need a specific type of object you know go ahead and download it off any 3d site you would like personally i get my assets from sketchfab or i just reuse assets i already have and then i just mix and match up the shaders with my given art style of course and so i actually plan to upload these assets sometime to my Kofi, so you guys can actually have access to these files and you can actually go through them and you can use whatever you would like with them as well and i actually have my own custom node here that i made you can actually look at it over here it's just very simple just a bunch of mixed shaders and colors and what the shader does it creates like variations uh kind of like a painterly styled variation between you can see the it has like this little bit of uh noise like painterly noise texture the camera if you look here i've set up the camera the focal length will also help with the perspective shot maybe you want to deep perspective you know i can mess around with the focal length of the camera in blender obviously i'm not going too deep into blender you guys have to kind of figure that out for yourself but you can also change the resolution of the camera 
within the square because the square right here represents what is actually going to come out in the final product once you render the scene now just one final aspect that i added to the background if you look closer you can kind of see these lines made possible by blender's grease pencil tool which has been just a really been a remarkable in terms of using it for my comics it really pulls everything together in the scene and it gives it more of a hand-drawn feel and that's kind of what i wanted and you can actually change the thickness of these lines as well as mess around with a whole bunch of modifiers in terms of the line work to thin the lines out as well as, well as giving them varied pressure thickness in certain areas really manipulate them to your will same with the shaders you can do what you want with the shaders having a really good knowledge of blender shaders can really help you in the long run because if you want to change up your style or you want the assets to fit your style which is one of the bigger problems that i've seen with people's comics they just reuse assets that doesn't actually fit their style or, or kind of feels out of place and takes you out of the immersion of the comic so you can kind of mess around with these to get the desired style that you would like also keeps things more consistent for yourself now let's hop on to how exactly i set up these character positions uh using blender's armature rig and so what i normally do is as you can see i didn't follow the rig exactly but if you have the rigify modifier add-on and you actually turn those on by going into blender's preference go to the add-on menu just type in a rig and you'll see it here rigify modifier you turn that on and once you hit shift a or open the add menu over here you can add an armature and, and you just click human metric and that's what that pops up right and you can kind of mess around with the settings to make it like a wireframe um, so that you can actually see through it now what this is just to accommodate for the perspective of your character make things easier for yourself so you don't actually have to guess how the character standing where you're standing here this is just kind of to help with that and make things much more easier because because uh, that time spent on figuring out how the character standing where you're standing is usually time that can actually be spent making the comic itself so you don't really want to waste any time there so what i did was i positioned the uh, rigs where i would like the characters to be and then you can also hop into pose mode and you can actually pose these rigs out uh, just be aware that the heads of the rigs aren't to scale and, and they're just a little bit proportionally bigger than the body so you might have to make an adjustment there when doing your rough for the character positioning and perspective you can also bring in fully rigged characters that you find on the internet maybe you actually have a 3d maybe you actually have like a 3d modeled rig already ready somewhere else right you can actually just bring it into blender and you can actually position them as i position them here you can even add the grease pencil modifier onto those rigs so that you can actually get the outline of them as well i find this method much more fast and it doesn't take too much out of your pc and it just doesn't uh, disrupt my workflow as much and it's much more fluid i can move quickly with using this otherwise because if your rig is too heavy on your pc it's gonna lag out and you basically have a whole bunch of lag moving that rig around but with the armature modifier it's just a bunch of bones you know it's just really a skeleton and you, all you have to do is pack some meat on there right so yeah that's basically how i do the setup for my characters and position them where i would like them to be i don't even have to pose them i just put them in like a t pose because it doesn't really matter on the positioning of the hands and everything in certain perspectives if i want to do more of an intricate position or like a more crazy perspective twisting going on or something i would maybe pose them a bit more but for these type of simple scenes this is fine for me i can work with this and then i would just add a if you go here to crease pencil you can add a stroke or blank crease pencil and select the crease pencil object here now that we have the crease pencil object selected we can actually just go into draw mode and now we can draw here so maybe we would actually want something over here. I'm just drawing with my mouse to demonstrate. So it's going to look probably really terrible. But um, but you, you get the point, right? You get the, this really lopsided whatever object, whatever the hell this is. Uh, so yeah, you can superimpose things over the 3D background. That's normally how I do it. Once you're happy with the results, you like what you see, you hit into render and you just render out the image. And you'll see this is what pops up but obviously you want these little things separate from the background layer because the background layer is already finalized and you don't want to kind of like mask these out in clip studio 
So what you do is you just actually very simple. And this is why you actually put your various objects in collections so you can turn things on and off and make sure everything's in their respective collection so that you can actually just head on to this camera icon over here. Just click that. And now the drawing objects will not be rendered out. So once you render this image out, you will see that there is no referencing of the characters, just the pure background. And that's what you want actually. And you head over here to image and you save as whatever you want to save it as in the respective folder you would want it. Obviously name your folders and also name the objects that you're putting into those folders so you know exactly what they are. And then you can just do the reverse as well as just turn off everything else and leave the drawing layer on and then render that image out and there you go. Now you only have the reference of the characters and now you can actually render those out separately very easily. Just go to image, save as and save it wherever you want to. There is another way you can do this using the compositor and you can actually uh, set it up so that you can actually render these things out throughout separately and also add a directory to it so automatically when you render these things come out and it goes automatically into your folder however i actually haven't done that so i'm not going to actually show you and now i'm not going to even pretend to know how to do that so <laughs> let's actually skip that for now i actually forgot how to do that myself but that is a simple way on how you can actually do that now once you're done here you can just minimize that you can actually just come into club studio all you have to do is literally drag and drop your images into your Clip Studio file. So if we head over here, you can see I'm just looking for where exactly I put those. And if you head into the final folder, you can see um, there is a bunch of stuff here. Here yeah, you can see I've uploaded backgrounds in here already with setup and everything. And you can literally just drag those in here. And there they are. Uh, my friend just actually showed me a really cool thing you can do. You can actually just, what I would do is just grab these two layers, drag them onto this folder icon. And now you have this folder and you can actually just hit Control C to copy and then Shift Control V and paste it. And I'll paste it right here in the center of your view now you can actually just transform it to fit whatever panel you want and maybe just change yeah just apply so now you actually have that panel set up right there and all you have to do is finalize it with your drawing over it you know what i mean and then all you have to do is export your file you just go to export webtoon and this little thing will pop up right here just make sure you name things correctly and you can also turn on the scale if you want or the quality depending on how big the files are you can actually, can actually change how much the length of the file itself uh, how much pieces you want to chop it into and you can actually just export it i think there's actually another feature now with the newest version of clip studio you can actually upload directly to webtoon i've actually heard um, but it normally i just keep all my files one side so i can upload it into various different platforms that i would like to see my projects on but that's about it for this video guys if you guys have any other questions that you would like to answer just let me know in the comment section down below i'll answer them for you so if this video was helpful for you you know what to do like subscribe as well as ring that notification bell for more content like this and if you guys have any other questions on the workflow i use just let me know in the comment section down below and i'll answer them as soon as i can get to them so thank you guys again for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye now